This Week and Each Week is brought to you by Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience. Welcome to Game All Night! Ah, hello there. Welcome to another Game All Night. I will be joined shortly by Mr. John Cox of John Gets Games, but right now I am joined presently by bartender Dan, Dan the bartender, the drink master, the mixologist extraordinaire. Sir, how are you? I uh, am burdened with nicknames, but I am I am doing very well. Well, you know, I've you, been busy pouring tonight, by the way. You have been, you have been. We've been we've been doing a lot of little extra video shoots, so you got to pour a lot of beer. Indeed. And we got to drink it subsequently. So I have no idea what's in my glass right now, actually. Yeah, let's talk about that. So I poured uh, you a Sierra Nevada Celebration. That's a it's an annual release they do uh, right around Christmas time. Comes out in the fall, like October November time frame before Christmas each year. But it's not a Christmas style beer. It's a it's like a no. malt background, like a fresh hop ale. So uh, so one of my favorites each year. I always make sure to grab a case. Yeah, I like it. It's got that nice blend of hops and malt. But but you're right. It, this is not like I'm not drinking like Christmas spice and pine trees at yeah. all. Yeah. What and, are you drinking? I have a lot more patience for a yeah. hoppy, malty Christmas ale than I do for your uh, your, your gimmicky cinnamon and nutmeg. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Once every twelve months. Yeah. Once. Yeah. What are you drinking, sir? So I have um, Stone's uh, smoked porter with chipotle pepper so they had the smoked port around for years they did a release of it with a with just a touch of chipotle pepper that doesn't come off like one of your like gimmick jalapeno beers where where spicy is the experience of it just adds a little little nice like a note on top of the smoked porter it's a uh, it's pretty nice yeah no i like it it's uh hence why it's in my fridge it's definitely definitely a favorite so let's bring on john and mr john are you drinking anything this evening uh yes i'm also drinking beer I have a <laughs> excellent black porter. Okay. Um, I'm a huge fan of porters and stouts, and I'm a huge fan of Deschutes Brewery. So there you go. I do like Deschutes. They definitely do some hoppy stuff, and I like the uh, the porter. So good on you. Excellent. Yeah, choice. I'm not and crazy think... about um, IPAs usually, but the Mirror Pond from Deschutes is one of my favorite. And that's fair. You know, not everybody has to like IPA. That's you know, that's completely reasonable. So, yeah. so John does John gets games now. John Gets Games has, I've seen it morph over over time, and we'll get more into that later, but mostly known for, he does a vlog about upcoming games and things that are coming out and what's hitting his table, and most notably, good, solid rules breakdown and run-throughs, I think are probably the things that you do very well. Would I be wrong in that? Well, thanks. <laughs> I mean, I, I like to think so. I spend a lot of time on <laughs> Well, your camera doesn't shake, so you know that makes a lot of people happy. I think you know, that's that's you know, kind of that wasn't always the case. No, no, I started off with a uh, with my iPhone in my hand, shaking all over the place, just like a lot of people. <laughs> and and you know what? That's completely fine. So so what did get you started making like? Because my goodness, like reviews are one thing, okay, and. Go back and watch our whole review roundtable, which aired a few weeks ago. By the time you see this, you know, getting the plays in, but but doing a playthrough is it's not easy, and it's definitely not easy trying to have two personalities, right? Uh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this uh, the playthrough started out as a bit of a personal dare, I guess, to a certain okay. extent. I'd been making reviews for quite some time, and actually, this goes back to the shaky cam thing because I had been. Uh, holding onto the phone for a whole, you know, I don't know, year or something like that. And right. then uh, one day I just had a moment where I was like, I just need something to hold my camera so that I can <laughs> free up my hands. And I was like, I know what I'll do. I have a shoe rack downstairs that's made of little metal wires. Sure. So I took that and I put it on top of my table, took all the shoes off. And then I got my phone and I put it face down on the shoe rack pointing between the wires and with that, I recorded a review for, I believe it was Caveman Quest for Fire. And it worked really well. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this seems so much better. Uh, now I need to find, like, a shoe rack with wheels. <laughs> like, that was my uh, my uh, first plan was to find a better rack with wheels so I could move this rack around the table. And long story short, I ended up finding at a uh, kind of a garage sale 
okay. this long articulating boom arm. And I was able to hammer on a rubberized iPhone case to the end of it that I could swivel on the nail. All right. And then I started using that to record. And this leads me to the playthroughs because right around that time, I realized that now that I didn't have my hands holding onto this camera, <laughs> well, what else could I do with this? And I, I, f I vaguely remember just having a thought like, I wonder how hard it really is to make a two-person playthrough. Like, Famous last that words, hard, right? right? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, I decided I got this game out. It was called Progress okay. something, something, something. I can't remember the, the subtext of it, but I had never played it before. And it had been Evolution sitting on my of shelf. technology it's, or something. That's the one. That's okay. the one. And I backed it on, I believe, Kickstarter. And I said, you know what? I'm going to read the rules, and I'm just going to play it in front of this camera and see if it works. Okay. And so I did that, and it took a while. I don't remember how, exactly how long, but it was definitely an interesting experience trying to play as two different characters. But when it all ended and I edited it, I felt it was good enough, and I put it online, and then I just did it again. And then I did it again and again. And it just, like, the ball starts rolling, just like the first time I made a video at all. So I guess... Um, it began on a lark, and I, I sort of like it. I mean, I love board games. I love to play board games, and right. when I'm filming a playthrough, I'm, I'm playing the board game. You know, I, I love the gears and the mechanisms of the way board games work, and when I'm doing the playthroughs, I get to experience that. Instead of with the reviews, I would just sit there and, you know, rip them apart or praise them. Okay. Um, that's different. You know, that's that's not the same thing as actually playing. And there's right. also a another kind of meta game on top mm -hmm. where I... Uh, I cheat with these playthroughs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I sometimes stack the deck. I sometimes stack the uh, die rolls because I'm trying to make something that's entertaining that shows the game off well. Okay. But, you know, not every game shows itself off well every single time you play. So they're not totally authentic mm -hmm. um, as far as like a legit play, but it's as this extra layer of trying to play a game and have it be entertaining and like kind of work things around so that I could show all of the different mechanics and show this strategy and how it differs from that strategy. And it's like a fun meta game of trying to puzzle my way through making it good. And uh, it doesn't, nothing feels better than when I have like a tie at the end of one of those playthroughs because I'm trying to have everyone be viable. That obviously isn't the case, but yeah, anyway, that's maybe a little more than you were expecting. Oh, no, no. It's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I, one of the, the first people I encountered online was Rado. And, you know, I think we, we can all assume he's kind of the grandfather of the playthrough, right? I mean, he's probably one of the first people, and he still does it the same way, you know, the shaky cam yeah. and and everything. And what I find interesting, and it, it's my intention to have him on towards the end of the year. He's very busy doing a very large move, for those of you who don't know. Um, right. But he's only moving halfway across the globe. It's not that big a deal, right? Um, but... What's funny about him is I think that he genuinely plays the other player in the mindset that Jen, his wife, plays it. Do you find that you try to assign a specific persona to each game as the opponents, or do you just kind of wing it based on the game? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I think that it's more the latter. Uh, okay. Sometimes I go into a game that has maybe multiple paths to victory, like multiple dominant, maybe not dominant, but uh, paths that you can go. And okay. I'll try to say, okay, I think usually as the character that I'm playing, I, I talk through the, the ideas that I have more, and I try to hybridize strategies with the character that I'm, I am playing as. And the other characters, I might try to have the blue player just go hard on this thing, you know, okay. just build, you know, canals, or whatever, if it's Bruges, and have, like, the yellow player just really focus on, you know, building people if it was Bruges, you know, like, a different type of focus. Although, for most games, everybody has to kind of do lots of things. So, for me, I think there's less of a personality that comes through these different players, and it's more like different lines of play. You okay. know, I've, I've tried to inject more personality as time has gone on, but it's very minor. You know, every yeah. now and then I'll say, oh, you know, the red player's really unhappy that that happened. <laughs> uh, but that's that's on, rare. Red's aggressive, <laughs> yellow's cowardly. I mean, there, there's obvious like parallels we can make here. But the you um, can, and so yeah. I, I, I think depending on the game, if it's a particularly if it's a game that can evoke a lot of emotion, then I might try to get a little bit more of that in. Like if it's a bluffing game or push your luck style game. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, I did a playthrough for um, uh, Die Quacksalber von Quinlenberg about a month and a half ago. Impressive. And that's <laughs> that's a that's a push your luck uh, bag building game. Okay. And I was convinced that one of the characters was just completely out of it. And as I was <laughs> pulling these tokens out of the bag, 
I just got luckier and luckier. And it was <laughs> it was actually a magical moment. I didn't uh, plan that or anything. They had this ludicrous streak of luck. I don't think they actually ended up winning, but they, they got actually really close when it seemed like they were totally out of it. And I was legitimately excited. Like, I finished that playthrough, and I was like, <laughs> wow, that was a fun moment. Like, I'm used to kind of planning everything. I know what I'm going to say, and then I do it. Right. And then I guess the occasional game, like, push your luck. Like, I don't want to plan that too much, or else I will lose all of the, the fun there. And so that one, man, yeah. that worked out really well. Like, all of the bad pieces stayed in the bag. I was so happy that I caught that on film. That's <laughs> awesome. And it, it kind of it speaks to wanting to keep the experience true. Because, you know, you we do want emotion in our videos, right? We don't want just blah, blah, right. blah. Like, you know, so it's fun, especially when you're playing something like that where there's nobody on screen. The only characters are the bits, right? The bits and oh, the cards. Hands. Yeah, and your <laughs> hands, right? It's like, oh, yeah. I need a Manny this week. You know, <laughs> I totally get that. And it's hysterical. I did that once, but I did it more from a... I want to explore uh, the, this game and I want to s figure out these mechanisms because it wasn't quite there. It was sulking for me. So I actually oh, like sure. put out four players and I like wrote down on each one, like he's going heavy corn. He, and I have post-it notes on everybody as I'm yeah. playing them. I'm like, wait a sec. Oh wait, he's going corn. He's going buildings, you know, just to try and keep it all straight. So I don't know how you do it sometimes because it's, um, <laughs> There's so much going on. I would lose. I lose track of me playing alone, <laughs> let alone playing with three <laughs> or four people. No way that's gonna happen. So I mean, that can't happen. One thing I've realized about board gaming after starting to videotape myself playing them right. is that I don't think there's a game played that doesn't have an asterisk attached to it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, it's it's worse when it's just me because I'm controlling right. all of the players, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, how did I forget to do this? Or, oh, I, you know, this or that, or I forgot to pay for this. Or yep. I had a playthrough once where I just skipped an entire turn for one of the four players. Like, just it happens. totally yeah. went right by it. And that's not going to happen when you're sitting around playing with your friends. But I do think that more mistakes happen when you are playing with your friends than you might realize. Like, there's so many little things that can be messed up. And sure. when it comes to the gaming experience, humans are the compiler. Like, the, uh, the coding for board games is a rule book, and our brains are the compilers. So it's only going to be as good as we can compile those things and remember it versus like a video game experience where a glitch is, you know, all in the uh, the game perspective and not necessarily for the board game. So I don't know. I've, I've done a lot of videos, so I think I've gotten better over time. Okay. But I still – it still happens. I mean, <laughs> I, earlier today, uh, for the last three days, actually, I've been filming a playthrough. I just finished it a couple hours ago. And I – twice in this video, I had to go back a turn or two because I realized I missed something entirely. Um, I did something really stupid, and I'm trying to show the game well. And in one of those cases, I lost two and a half hours with the case, the, uh, the process of going backwards, like meticulously reversing every single turn to undo every single thing so that the board state was the same. So, I mean, mistakes are really unfortunate. I try not to have them happen uh, because it, it can be very time intensive. I mean, there's been yeah. many uh, playthroughs that I've done, probably on the order of five or so now, where right. I had to scrap the entire thing and refilm it because of one thing or another. I got a key rule wrong. The microphone wasn't plugged in. There's just a variety of things that can happen. Wow. Um, but, yeah. Now, now, how much so, – so that brings me to an interesting point, right? So, I mean, you play through a game once. At what point – because we don't have editors, right? Like we're, we're self-editing these things. So right. at what point do you realize you go, oh – crap, I just screwed that up, Is and you have to rewind. Like, do, have you found that during editing, and then you have to, like, go reset the whole game, break everything out, and do it all again? Or at what point does that kind of rear its head? Um, I think I've only ever done that once, and it was just for final scoring. So that wasn't too bad to okay. actually reset the game back up again. Uh, usually I realize I make an error in the first 10 to 15 minutes of a multi-hour editing process where I go... <laughs> wait what and uh and then you know there's no redoing that I, there's just it's just a if you're going to get the game out and set it back up again odds are good if it's a rules error you did it through most of the game and so it just, just makes sense to restart um so yeah the it's, game it's set up until important. you're done editing just to make sure <laughs> you know i don't do that anymore uh strictly because 
it, it's such a bear to redo it, um, and it's not that big of a deal to actually un, um, to, to pack all the stuff up. I guess it really depends on what I need to do next. I will leave it up until I need to clear the game off. And you know, sometimes <laughs> I do things back to back, and sometimes I have nice long breaks. So, um, like today, I cleaned up that game so that I could record this uh, the show because <laughs> that's all, everything is done on this one table in this one room. Well, I I tell you, I can't. I get I get rules wrong pretty consistently it's it's a well-known thing in my gaming groups but you know and some people get frustrated others you know i kind of am of the opinion did you have fun then the game won you know if the scoring's off we'll fix it next time like i don't i'm more of a live and let die kind of guy i don't really need to you know it's not that big a deal but i would also imagine if you're playing these games like i mean if they're in your spare time especially when you started out and you're doing them you're doing them in the evenings, you're doing them at night, you're doing them after you just worked an entire day, you know, so, so we're even more prone to making those mistakes than we would be if, you know, oh, got to go to work today, walk down in the basement and start filming, right? Um, well, to a certain extent, your assumption is, is wrong, actually. Uh, Good. I have a, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just as far as, as, as I'm concerned, because I don't have the, the issue of working all day long and then trying to do this, because... I uh, I don't generally do that. I have a strange job. I work uh, in the events industry. Well, my my other job that I've been doing for eleven years now. Okay. Um, the reason I started making videos in general is because I work Wednesdays, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, usually I start at ten to four in the afternoon, and then I'll get home around one to four in the morning. So what I realized is, you know, all of my friends with regular nine to five desk jobs would be at work on a Tuesday. And I'd be sitting around at home, bored out of my mind. And that, that's actually where the first videos came from, because I just everyone I wanted to play games with was at work, and I right. was not at work. Um, so there's been many times where I actually get up and I film for six hours, and then I leave, and then I go to work for about ten hours. So it's it's usually right. the inverse. And I don't know, maybe that's why I get less things wrong. I don't know. I still get things wrong, but I think I I very rarely work the other job and then come home and film for John Gates games. I very often edit, but editing is, is a less intensive thing. Um, yeah. you know, than actually recording the stuff. I just, I usually don't have the brain power, honestly to do it. And I think part of that's because I have a physical job too. And I just, I can come home pretty exhausted. Now, when you say events, I assume, are you like running around setting up event spaces and pulling in, you know, different things like that during the process? It's that's, that's not fun at all. <laughs> Uh, specifically, uh, the, I guess the specialty for me is uh, event power distribution and lighting. Okay. Um, so, you know, big generators, lots of big heavy cables, lots of lights and theatrical lights and all sorts of that that kind of thing is the, the thing I, I particularly do. Um, the last six or seven years I've been focusing on managing the stuff. But either way, it's, it's something that it, I've enjoyed well enough, but I have been actively trying to sure. go part-time with that and work on John Gets Games more as a uh, self-employed, aspect to my life so realistically i have two jobs going on right now cool so so now now i have to find out so what's the uh the most interesting thing you've ever had to set up i mean i just we have um cirque du soleil just came to town and it's like literally five miles from my house and it's really cool to see the tent and see the event and see the site and realize it was literally nothing but a parking lot when they showed up so I have a huge amount of respect for the people who can rig and set all that up. That's that's absolutely insane to to just pack everything and then off they go. So, yeah. What what kind of thing would you say has been like the most crazy thing you've ever had to set up? I really hate to be coy, but technically I'm not supposed to talk about a lot of them. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Republican so National I, Convention. Okay. No. <laughs> I, I have done a uh, something similar to that. I wasn't too happy about, but um, <laughs> the uh, a, a lot of the things I do are for very very rich people, and they they bring in you know famous rock stars and that kind of stuff for their shows. And technically, we're not really oh, cool. supposed to talk about it. So I, I hate to be coy, but I've been on stage with some pretty big acts before as I try to fix the equipment around them. So <laughs> it's uh, I don't know. It's honestly not as exciting as it sounds. So you're kind of like you're a roadie, but you're not. You're you're kind of a roadie who's on call. Then. That's true. Yeah, I'm I'm with the uh, the venue normally, even though the venue changes all the time. There you go. Cool. Well, that's very yeah. interesting. I mean, but I guess that audio experience and the power distribution thing, I guess it came back when you decided to go a little bit beyond the iPhone and kind of migrate into what would be known for the quality that you have now. Because, I mean, 
obviously you're not filming on an iPhone these days. Your your video is right. way too sharp and crisp to be any. Not that they're not good, but they're not at that level. Right. Uh, yeah, I definitely bent a few ears from from employment uh, uh, coworkers, uh, okay. like how to do audio because I'm I'm a lighting guy, so audio is a big mystery. I kind of see sound as a, a bit of a like the closest thing we have to magic is is sound engineering. <laughs> like, how does that even work? Vibrations in the air, it's ridiculous. Um, so I, I, I asked a few friends about um, microphone suggestions and also noise canceling for my studio in general. Right. Um, and then when it comes to the camera, I, I bought a couple of them and then I returned the ones I didn't like. <laughs> so I, it was kind of a, a trial, trial and error situation to uh, get the equipment going. Yeah, I literally just, I'm, I'm looking to add a second camera to my set and I've gone through a few. And uh, let's put it this way, you haven't seen any shots from any of them yet because, yep, they keep getting in the Amazon box and getting sent back. <laughs> yeah. You know, you do get what you pay for, but unfortunately I don't have a spare $800 lying around. So trying to yeah, find that I, happy middle ground. I certainly spent more than that on my camera, but that was a couple of years ago and I've used it a lot since then. So the idea was... It was an investment, and you know, I, I hope that it's actually paid off. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I think this is an interesting place to take a quick pause and hear a word from our lovely sponsors. So we'll be right back after this. GAN presents Dramatic Rules Theater. The moment we've all been waiting for. Players should place all their dice in their cup. When everyone is ready, shout, go, and roll the dice from your cup. Each time you roll, you may select one die, and only one, that rolled a symbol on your spell. Place that die over the matching symbol to lock it and put all your dice back in your cup. Once you've rolled and locked all the required symbols for your spell, yell, ta-da! All right, everybody, welcome back. I'm here with Jonathan Cox of John Gets Games fame, the light bulb guy. <laughs> I do love your logo. That That is, yeah. I, I really do. It's, um, you know, it's so hard to make something that's just very simple, but conveys information. And I think the light bulb and, you know, the filament with the initials, I love it. I love it. Did you do that or well, did you find someone? No, I, I got... I got really lucky, and um, and it was a bit arduous, if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah, okay. I had a terrible logo for a few years that I threw together in Photoshop. I am not an artistic kind of person. And then a coworker's girlfriend is a professional graphics artist for you know a, a tech company. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. And she was super nice, and he's like, "You should talk to her." And so I did. And it took about ten months to come up with that logo. It was. Wow. It was pretty rough going, honestly. I was I was easily my own worst enemy uh, in that process. Uh, my wife Jessica was a big part of the uh, creative process for that, the uh, the hexagon right. part of the light bulb, and I think the light bulb in general was all her idea. And uh, I just spent months and months just poo pooing all of these ideas. Um, it was it was pretty tough, if I'm being honest, like to to come up with something that you're gonna go forward with. Uh, right. The filament uh, squiggly bits that was from the graphics artist. Um, okay. a, a wonderful woman named Grace. Uh, she was uh, very um, patient with me through that whole process. And then when it was all <laughs> over, she was like, okay, that'll be X dollars. And it was it was embarrassingly low. So I think I paid her 10 times what she asked for. And that was still, I don't think, anywhere near enough for the 10 months of work that she put into it, off and on, of course. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think in the end, I think it's a really nice looking logo. I think it, it comes off well. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm glad you like it and that you find it you know, memorable because that's really what you want in a logo. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, I think, I think the other thing is simplistic and then, you know, scalability. I just went through, right. I completely, I, mine's all my own fault. Like I did, my logo came from my brain for better or worse. So trying to come up with the four color and then kind of be able to dumb it down and then, you know, take it down to black and white and then do simple. It's, it's not easy. Not easy at all. Yeah. And I, you know, when yeah. I see good, you know, I could tell that that was like, eh, that's professionally done and guided. So well done. Well done. Yes. I, I, I got lucky in, in all of those ways for it to come together. And I am, I'm really happy with it too. 
Yeah, it's like, you know what? It, I, I heard it it's in management speak. It's one of those things where it's like, if you can't do it, find somebody who can or surround yourself with the people who can. It's like, you know, right. find the right person, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So speaking of your channel, now you've been doing John Gets Games. When exactly did you start? It's been several years now. Yeah, it was early April 2014. So yeah, it's okay. been a little over four years. I guess four and a half years now. Time really does run on, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And then you really kind of started coming into your own space and having your own voice. And I, you know, you went through your logo change probably about what, two years ago, I'm guessing, because that's about when I discovered yeah, you. Maybe two and a half okay. around there. It's honestly, it starts to bleed together when it's this many years, but it was, it was a couple years in. You, you a few months are bleeding together already. I understand. So <laughs> it's totally right. But it's, yeah. um, it's definitely something that, you know, you started filming these um, these other things in your spare time. And it's it's funny. I find that a lot of people's love and kind of where they come from in the hobby kind of kind of grows out of that sediment of they want to participate, but they might not be able to make a game night. So they find other ways to fill the board gaming void, I like to call it. Right. So, you know, yeah. they paint minis. Um, I built foam core inserts for a while. You know, you start to pimp out your games or you know, spend endless hours cutting out an 18xx game, you know, whatever it is, right? Hopefully we do all you these find yeah. an outlet that's more productive than just buying more games. Because I think that's right. the first way place we default to is, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to shop because I can't play right now. <laughs> yeah, right. that is, that's very true. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess from my perspective, I, I would always talk my friends' uh, ears off <laughs> when they would come over and have a game night. Uh, and so, you know, I just turned talking to my friends and to talking at my phone and then, you know, microphones and whatnot, uh, because that was that was the thing that I wanted to do was just I have a lot to say about board games. And, you know, I found an avenue for it. Right. No, you absolutely did. Now, recently, you kind of you kind of underwent within the last few months, you underwent a kind of big shift in your channel. And, you know, you right. kind of so before we used to do playthroughs, rules video, your vlog, and then the um, you would do reviews, correct? Well, I never did specific rules videos. Those were okay. always combined in with the reviews into okay. a very long video. <laughs> very long, yes. Um, <laughs> and then you play the complete game through. It's not like you play like, let's play two turns and be done with it. Um, you also go through the, the huge um, time suck that is you tell everybody where all the breaks are in your videos. Which <laughs> Right, right. Uh, yeah, I'll tell everybody right now. You ain't gonna see it from me because I know what it's like. You're you just run this sheet and you got to do this and then you got to add it back in and then you got to edit it and then it's yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, like everything, you get quicker at it as time goes on. <laughs> I Fair mean, uh, like most aspects to all the videos I make, I I took the adage of make something that you want to consume. Uh, so you know, I made reviews in the style of reviews that I wanted to see. And mm -hmm. I started putting the timestamps in because it drove me crazy that I wouldn't be able to see exactly what I wanted to, to see in a given video. I'd pull up somebody else's video and I, I would just want to know a specific aspect to it. And I, okay. I just would say, again, like the playthroughs, like, how hard can it be to add the, the timestamps? Well, I'll try. <laughs> and um, I don't know. It's, you get used to it. It's, it's not that hard. Occasionally <laughs> you make a mistake and then it's a typo forever and that's annoying. But um, And then with the playthroughs, yeah, I mean, I started making the full playthroughs because... That's what I like to watch. And when I started doing this in 2014, it seemed like the only person who was doing that was this guy named uh, Mikel Wibner. Um, okay. His name was Miwi on uh, YouTube. And mm -hmm. I loved his stuff. I mean, he, he, he held the phone, so it was a bit shaky. But sure. he played the whole game, and he edited out all of the gaps. And realistically, I started doing playthroughs just to, to just copy him. <laughs> because I, I wanted more of his videos, and he put out one every month or two back then he hasn't put it one out in years i don't think at this point gotcha. so so yeah i was just i've just been trying to make things that i want to consume and i think that that's you know any advice i can give the people getting in to the hobby it's that it's make what you want and put it out there because then your passion and love for that thing is going to come through so right you recently dropped doing the reviews now you still leave the playthroughs you still do the rules breakdowns um, and all that stuff, but the reviews themselves are not there. But I would argue that a playthrough is better. 
and we had this discussion before we came back that I learned so much more about a game by watching a playthrough and the rules helped they set the framework but I learned from watching so for me to watch somebody play through and make mistakes or try different strategies that tells me if this is a game I want a lot more than some guy saying approved you know and you don't know all the motivations there because they're they can be all over the map so right I mean once again it I I make the things that I want and I mm -hmm. agree with you I'm, I'm the same boat as you I I pretty much never watch anyone else's reviews. I don't watch reviews actually anymore at all because I'm not making my own reviews either because I, I am a playthrough type person as well. I I just want to see how it works and if it looks interesting enough, I'll maybe read the rules and then I might, I'll think I'll have a good idea right. if it's something I'm going to enjoy. Now, I might not be able to tell if one strategy is broken or dominant or okay. any of those kind of things after reading the rules, but you know, you'll hopefully have an idea, I think, uh, through a playthrough process. And uh, yeah, I, I stopped making reviews a few months ago, and that started out as a bit of a brain teaser. Not not teaser, like a, okay. a what if. Like I was just sitting there and I was like, man, I really don't like making reviews. What would happen if I stopped making them? <laughs> and I kind of just thought about it and like what my time and how I would play games and all these kind of things. And I just started to feel so happy with the thought of not having to dedicate my time to making sure. reviews that I realized that I should... I don't know, jump off that cliff or, you know, whatever, take that uh, leap to a certain extent because it was a bit of a, a tent pole to my channel. You know, like you said, I have, I had three different types of content. I put out monthly vlogs, which I've put a lot of effort into. I put out playthroughs mm -hmm. and I put out yep. reviews and I put all, did all three of those things. And so taking one of those things out, I was worried that, you know, the, the stool of my channel would fall over if that makes sure. sense. But uh, that does not appear to have been the case. And uh, yeah, I, I think, for me, it was really sapping the fun out of the hobby for me. Like, it was sapping the fun out of board games, and it was certainly sapping the fun out of John Gets Games. Um, and I think this is why many people who make content, especially highly subjective content like reviews, they tend to burn out after a while. Like, there's definitely some people who have been around for years and years, and even, you know, over a decade for a couple people. But a lot of people who I who used to make um, videos back uh, mm -hmm. when I first started, and I'm like, oh, I wish someday I could have the number of subscribers they have. A lot of those people don't really exist anymore because they burned out because they weren't having fun with it. And I saw myself going down that burnout road, and I was yeah. like, I don't want to stop doing this. I certainly don't want to lose my love for playing board games. And I would find myself just every time I play a game trying to break it. You know, I like, where's the problem? Like, ooh, that person okay. is, has a really big lead. Does that mean there's a runaway leader? I need to talk to everyone around the table about this and we'd stop playing the game and I'd have these discussions with my friends and, and we like to talk about the bones of games and we still do um, have you know um, epilogues at the end of a right. game and talk about how it went but it just had this businessy atmosphere to it and I don't know the, the ultimately what I realized is I felt like I was making development notes for okay. a game that is already shipped and that seems kind of silly you know you can't change that you can't fix the rules no, you no. can't tweak any of these things unless they do a second edition so it's like you know the the horse has left the barn and you close the doors or whatever it's i don't know I mean, it's, a lot of people enjoy the reviews and not everybody is like you and me a lot of people don't have uh, time in particular for playthroughs um, right. or the patience to watch somebody play it um, and for a lot of those people they have to go somewhere else and there's a, not a week that goes by so far where somebody doesn't ask me if i'm going to start doing it again and I, I don't think i will and it's unfortunate and I do miss it sometimes, if I'm right. being honest. I, you know, especially when I'm playing a game that I love. <laughs> I'm like, man, I want to make a review and just scream about it from the top of a mountain. But that that is certainly not what I want to do. I, I don't think I want to be a person who only makes reviews for games that I love. That just, I'd rather just cut it out entirely and then leave my subjective content to the vlogs that I still do, and then have the playthroughs just speak for themselves. Yeah. Also, with the playthroughs, you know, I usually teach most of the game in the first 15 minutes, so. A lot of people say, well, I don't have an hour and a half to watch the video, and I can't help but feel like, well, if you watch the first 10 to 15 minutes, you'll probably know right. um, if it's a game that you're going to like or not. It depends on the game, of course, but anyway, that's that's kind of my opinion on it. Well, it's it's interesting because I think, the, um, I think one of the things, like your reviews, definitely showed how conscientious you were of that, and I can only imagine that, you know, the work that went into gathering the data for the review because... You're a very conscious reviewer when you were doing it. You know, you're, you try to explore those things. I can't say that every reviewer out there 
is looking to try and break things and you know maybe they're trying to spin some knobs and dials and they're trying to play with the different aspects of the game i do believe that but i don't i don't know yours just came through as very technical and mechanical so you know i get that and it's also added a lot of integrity i think to your reviews there's a, there's a thread there that i don't want to lose too like uh, it's cool to hear you mention you know some of the the creators who were doing some of this stuff a few years ago that we've lost you know in the meantime so i said that that's that poorly phrased that makes it sound more dramatic but who burned out and uh, <laughs> we've lost and we're going to have a little in memoriam <laughs> segment coming out at the end of the year shots, here <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, it is, it is good to have a, a moment to bring up MeWe, who, uh, you know, uh, Chris, you mentioned Rado, but, but yeah. honestly, like, like MeWe's a guy I was watching playthroughs of before that, and, and the format was much closer to what John does, like a longer form, you know, more intense playthrough than, than, than Rado's yeah. style. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, like I said, I straight up copied his, <laughs> like I was yeah. just, I was essentially a fan who was just trying to emulate what he was doing. I, I also, I think his stuff was great. Yeah, and it's not something that I watch start to finish. It's usually something I start to watch and everything like that. And then I'm doing other things and it's on the background while I'm doing other things. Then every now and then I'll be like, what just happened? And I have to go check it out and kind of see what happened. But I think ultimately, yeah, you're trying to get the vibe and the feel. And as long as you have somebody good narrating what the action is, you know, I think I get a much better impression of the pace and the like and everything like that. I almost get more more bang out of a top like a top 10 or a top 100 list from people now because yeah. it kind of puts it in a context, right? I can't tell you how many great reviewed games turn up on the discount rack at some point, right? They're reviewed and they were wonderful, but they don't have the staying power. And you can say, you know, we talk about longevity and replayability in our review, but Really, unless you've had it for six, eight months and it's been hitting the table once in a while, do you you really can't answer that? I don't think. You right. know, e even Spiel doesn't get it perfect every single time. I think they pick a great game, and then sooner or later, you still might find it in the discount bin or a nominee. Technically, a nominee shouldn't be in a discount bin, right? But they end up there well, because I mean they don't have it. The top 10 lists yeah, well, also do the cool thing. I'm sorry, I stepped in you there, uh, John. But the no top worries. 10 list or, or even the top 100 list, those are the cool thing of, of finding, like going really deep tracks too. Like you find something right. from someone that, that hasn't been in the hotness for years or never was. Right. And then all of a sudden, that those are real discoveries. This is something that this person's presented that you've never heard. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of takes out of play the, well, it's just a new version of Dominion. Okay. But how does it rank next to all the other deck builders you play? You know, is it is it better? Is it worse? Is Dominion still really high on your list because you love the immense variety you get from it? Or you've sunk $200 in it plus at this point? What? There's a lot of other things going on that I think I can glean from a list of favorites and things than I can an actual review. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah totally. I, I, top 10s is something that I've, I haven't really dipped into much. Uh, this last February, I ran a, a pledge drive to try and get the Patreon support up uh, higher um, because I was I'm going part time, and obviously I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is not cheap. And, <laughs> no. I'm, and one of the things I decided to do was I put out four top ten lists as like bonus content to try and like raise awareness, you know. Okay. And it was interesting doing those. I I enjoyed making them more than I expected to. Um, and yeah, it, it allowed me to really. I, I went back at the hundreds and hundreds of logged plays that I have because I've logged every board game I've played since 2010. Wow. And uh, and you like tried to parse all these things out and make those lists together and and remember I, there were definitely some games on there where I'm like, oh yeah, I haven't touched that game in years. And that game's great. <laughs> but, like you can even making your own top ten, you can have a moment of discovery from you know something in the dusty back shelves of your brain. Yeah, because you can just import into like Pub Meeple, import your games played, and then just start running through it. It's not that That's hard to exactly do. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from a from a small list, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, well, my God, why haven't I played that in forever? So you also, you're not just Joe Board Gamer. You, I'm sure you like to do things that are, you know, you're, you're in the Pacific Northwest. It's very outdoorsy out there. You, you have to do outdoor stuff, right? Like, it's not just we all, we're all living in our basements and playing board games all the time. What do you do for fun that's not 
you know, board game related? Well, um, that's kind of hard to say uh, at the at this point because uh, so much of my time is board gaming related because of John Gets Games. Sure. Um, you know, I, I still play a lot of games and I spend a lot of time making videos. Honestly, my job is outdoors, and that's not necessarily fun, but that is the main way that I, okay. I get out of the house and, and you know, get actual well, we physical exercise. we need that, exercise. though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I used to have other hobbies. Um, you know, I said I started doing this channel back in 2014. And also uh, in 2012 or 2013, I, I took up paragliding, uh, which is, you know, the act of running around with a, a gigantic wing on your back and <laughs> soaring across coasts and stuff like that, uh, cliffs. And uh, I really love doing that, but it didn't really hook me. And I, mm. I started making board game videos at the same time as I was still, you know, I would, I would make a video one day and then the next day I would drive out to Pacifica and the coast and I'd okay. fly around in the paragliding wing and, and I would just find myself not as interested, you know, <laughs> like it's this ridiculous thing that I was doing. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm like, I'm flying. This is magic. But I kind of want to go home and, you know, play board game or something like that. Like, you when, you, when your brain shuts off, it goes to board games. Interesting. That is absolutely true. And, you know, I'm I'm in my early 30s, and I definitely had a bit more of a, a, a crazy streak, I guess. Not crazy. Uh, Adrenaline-seeking uh, streak uh, before that. Okay. Like, I've always loved driving really fast and go-karts and cars and that kind of stuff. And, I, I, you know, I used to do kiteboarding. I've gone skydiving. I've done all that kind of stuff. And I still do enjoy the um the odd adrenaline type of thing i'm not against that stuff but i found that actually this is interesting because when it comes to hobbies you know like mm -hmm. i just said a bunch of hobbies like kiteboarding and paragliding and board gaming every one of these hobbies has people who exist within them and what i realized was that while i enjoy doing all of those things right i like board game people the most and i am a very social person and i think that's mm -hmm. a big reason why board gaming and then the YouTube and all that kind of stuff that I really went down on, I think that's the reason I went down this path and not the other ones. Because I found that I just did not really get along with the um, the other people who were kiteboarding. It's not like it was antagonistic, but right. you just know when you meet somebody if you're going to click. And it just I wasn't the find, people. Yeah, wasn't, I find if I wasn't your tribe. Who, <laughs> exactly. That is exactly true. And I think life is all about finding your tribe to a certain extent. And, and you just know when you meet somebody if you're going to click or not. And I found most of the time when I meet somebody and I find out they're into board games, I, I just know mentally, I'm like, okay, there is such a, a higher chance that we are really going to get along now. And, you know, I found back when I was doing the paragliding, I'd be out there with a bunch of other pilots and I would try to make small talk and I just wouldn't go anywhere. It almost feel like they could look right through me. Like, yeah. not, not, like, like they could tell I was not really one of them. Like I, mm. I had the gear and I had the skills and I was there, but they could tell I wasn't that kind of a person. I guess, I don't know if that's necessarily true or not, but that's the way I felt. And I think that's a big reason why I've gravitated towards this because I don't know, like I said, I'm a very outgoing social person. Right. Um, I, I enjoy hanging out with people. And so it's just, it's just important to be around the kind of people that you want to be around. Yeah. And it's great because if you don't like the people you're with, just wait two hours and you can be with three other different people playing a different game. <laughs> yeah. You wrote that you liked adrenaline on your, um, your, the questionnaire I, I asked people to fill out, and I'm like, well, I yeah. didn't really like adrenaline that is the game all that much. But I guess, you know, if you do, <laughs> <laughs> when I first read it, I'm like, eh. You know, it's funny. I do I do adventure sports because um, I'm a, I'm a ski patroller, and I love, like, starting to get into backcountry skiing, all the steeps and everything. And I also love scuba diving and going, you know, deep in the ocean and stuff like that. But... It's not the adrenaline that draws me. It's the, it's actually, the funny part is it's the solitude, you yeah. know, because, because when, it, when you're diving, you're like in your, your own little bubble and it's just you and your buddy and that's it. Or when I'm skiing, I'm out on the slope, I'm, I'm by myself and I'm with my thoughts. So it, it's kind of funny, but I think that's my introverted nature coming out and uh, check out the yeah, uh, episode with Travis Hill to talk more about that. But yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we we did spend a good amount of time. So it's but it's a different it's a different personality type, right? Like never been yeah. a team sport guy, but I've always enjoyed things I would do alone or against myself, if that makes any sense. What about yeah, you, Dan? What does. kind of what kind of non board game things do you enjoy? Well, um, I, I like the oh, I like the 
like that my audio was off. I like that uh, <laughs> that John set me up with cover here to suggest that um, that you you know you, you you can can find the folks who are, who are your tribe. And, and I'm afraid that that, that my uh, my tribe besides board gamers is actually the video game world too. So it's another okay. boring hobby that like also you know is done from the comfort of your home. Um, but uh, but especially with the internet increasingly community driven, you know, it's just something you can experience with other people a lot of times, and, uh, and and that's like those are the people who who you know reach into the things that I find compelling in games, uh, and we can talk about them and go deep. And uh, so yeah, I, I spend a lot of time doing the, the video game world on top of board games. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes sense though. But it's like you say, it's finding things you like, and you know, I'm probably never gonna see what Fortnite's all about. But you know, <laughs> there, there's a heck of a lot of people who that's their jam, and that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Right. So this has been a lot of fun, John. But I, you know, on every show, I find the need to play a game, and yeah. I find the need to make Dan figure one out for us so he is going to get his act together and then we're going to play a game uh after a quick break and commercial how does that sound good sounds good to me all right we'll be right back after this hey everyone i hope you're enjoying the show real quick i just wanted to take a moment to let you know a few things about us number one is we have a pod pledge page Now, on there, you can donate any amount, uh, monthly, weekly, daily, whatever, and any of that goes directly to support the show, build the sets, better equipment, and all those things. I'm not trying to get rich. I'm not trying to quit my day job. It just anything helps. Number two is please check out our social media. If you're not following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, please do so. We definitely interact with our people a lot on there uh, because we want you guys to be part of this show. Also, be sure to subscribe to YouTube. You know that little red button down there? Make sure you're clicking that and also do the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Once, twice, maybe three times a week. Lastly, please be sure to tell your friends. Whether you retweet something, whether you go out and you tell them about the channel, show them a show, anything you can do to get the word out, we would greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I'm now going to return you to your regularly scheduled program. Operators are standing by. It's game time. All right. Welcome back. It is now time to play a game. And All right. John and I are going to play a game, um, probably against each other, but I'm not 100% sure what exactly. Mr. Dan, what do you have in store for us? Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to pitch, you, pitch you two against each other. Two All right. Nail. Uh, see what we can do here. So, um, so this is a game that recently came out from Big Potato Games called Weird Things Humans Search For, um, and it's based on the the idea of Google's like autocomplete. Um, so, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. When you're typing in your search term, uh, you know, into Google, into Bing, whatever your search term, search engine of choice is. Um, after a few words, it will attempt to auto-complete, like helpfully provide suggestions for what you think, what it thinks you might be trying to search for. I'm um, more of an Alta Vista kind of guy. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Using my mosaic browser. Um, I do remember those days, but uh, that domain might be available. Um, so, uh, so anyway, um, this is, you know, attempting to guess, you know, if I, if we talk, if I give you the beginning of a search term, you will attempt to guess what the, uh, one of the autocompletes for it might be. Okay. Um, so it's, it's sort of a family feud idea where there are eight or more answers to each question. Okay. Um, and you're just trying to guess, you know, one of them that's on the list. Um, what okay. we'll do is we'll ask you for two answers to each or two possible options to auto possible completion terms Mm -hmm. um, for each clue Uh, and then uh, so the first one will be your main guess and the second one will be a bonus guess which will get you an extra kicker point if you happen to get that I like kicker points so for example we'll do one real quick just for fun Um, if the it started off with is it illegal to fill in the blank is it illegal to and you would give me two possible things that might be illegal to that people drive with no shoes on Um, it turns out that's not one of the top answers Hmm. So, um, set off fireworks was John. Also, not on the list. No, so, 
but this you've got the idea. Go well. We're off to an awesome start. John, I'll give you a hint. They never do. <laughs> if there's an underlying like aesthetic to what I go for in games, it's to make sure that it's a it's a train wreck on camera. That's a that's really what I'm. <laughs> you you succeed time. handsomely, sir. <laughs> Okay. All right. Do you think we're ready to start here? Yeah. Let's give this a shot. All right. So, <clears throat> I think I'm turning into a, and I have a good dozen Alien? answers here. So, uh, pause for a second. Think. Should of we two. just shout them out? Uh, well, I'll, I'll go to you in turn. So just think for a second. And oh, okay. I'm, go ahead, John. Give me two. Give me your main answer and a bonus of. I think I'm turning into. Uh, let's say my mother, and uh, I guess my first guess, uh, an alien. Okay. Um, I'm afraid I have neither mother nor alien here as answers. Do I have an opportunity to steal? Sure. Go, well, we'll go back. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So to um, be clear, I'm asking, I'll ask both of you each question. So all right. We'll, we'll alternate who goes first. But yes, I do need two. But I have place. to. I need... But the steal's one. No, you can score full points on on every question. So, um, okay. I really liked my mother. Yeah, that that's good. That's good. I thought that'd be one of them. Um, I wasn't too I, confident about the other one. Turning into a yeah. See, there, there is the A in there too, which probably sabotaged. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think I'm turning. I'm Japanese uh, would be my yeah, favorite yeah. answer. But yeah. But a I, I like couch it. potato. I'll go with couch potato. Couch potato, not on the list. All right. Can you, do you have, would you have a bonus answer for, for to steal one point from this and prevent it from being a, just a total uh, debacle? No, I, I make no guarantees at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm turning into a nervous wreck. Mm, I like that, and it is absolutely not an answer. The top not. answer, by the way, <laughs> I think I'm turning into a psychopath. My mother, uh, that would be close. <laughs> With werewolf, Sorry, vampire, mom. mermaid, all uh, also possible answers. Mermaid. So I don't know who thinks they're turning into a mermaid and they're searching for that. But well, no I'll... alien. No alien. Vampire? I guess it... you don't turn into an alien. You just are an alien. If it's a one-night ultimate game, it should all be lumped together. So vampire, alien, and werewolf should all right. be one answer. There's more of a transformation process <laughs> than some of that. Oh, right. I see what you did. Okay, all right. I see so, what you did there. So that was a warm-up round. We were just, let me, let yeah, me. Yeah, that, might, these that one might not carefully. even make air. We'll see. <laughs> all right, so who's going to go first, then? It's, it's definitely going to make air if they don't get any better from here. All right, um, so so we'll start this one off with Chris, but we'll need two answers from John as well after, uh, after Chris... Uh, <clears throat> Fires and misses. Um, so, am I allowed to shoot? Blank. Am, am I, I allowed, allowed to shoot, shoot? Blank. Dot. 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 Ellipse. Um, squirrels. Because I kind of hope I am. And a bonus answer as well. Um, my brother. <laughs> so, that was that was a reach, but squirrels. Our first answer on the list. So that will score two points for a successful Sweet. main answer guess. Although there is more points available because there are higher answers. Than okay. That. But still, Chris on the board with two points in round two. John, uh -oh. you have two answers for, am I allowed to shoot? Uh, bears? We can start with that one. Oh, my. And uh, let's see. Skunks? We're, 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 we're Would you want to is the better question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't advise it. So neither bears nor skunks, I'm afraid. So uh, I think we're going to see I'm the true value really of this game it. come out in these, uh, these <laughs> answers, though. Am I allowed to shoot on my property, by the way, is the top answer. Oh, that's Followed good closely oh. by, am I allowed to shoot down a drone? Um, hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Am I allowed to shoot trespassers? Um, so All right. See, I, I we think stayed too far on the uh, animal side. I think. It, yeah, it's I think possible we possible that we're 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 a little. Well, I say we, you actually got this. points. <laughs> so yeah, but it was the only animal on the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything else a little stranger than that. But okay. All right, keep All it right, strange. We're getting, we're getting back on the uh, <clears throat> back on track here. So we'll start off with you, John. I need two answers for do sumo wrestlers. Do sumo wrestlers? Oh my gosh. Do they do they need bathroom breaks? 
<laughs> a valuable uh, I, question, and I think uh, interesting to us all. I don't do think that's going to give me points. Do you have a bonus, uh, a bonus guess as well? Hmm. I like it. Let's say, ever go on a diet? Mm. <laughs> hmm. Again, I, I think both of these are, are important questions. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and give you points for your main answer. The judges have ruled that the question of wear diapers, do sumo wrestlers wear diapers, qualifies as, uh, as consistent <laughs> right, a stretch, your, but I'll take it. With your, uh, wow. <laughs> with your answer. Wow. <laughs> the judges have uh, have sympathy after a certain point. So That's fair. <laughs> so, so, Chris. Yes. Do sumo wrestlers... Um... Eat a lot. Do they ever get skinny? I'm afraid neither uh, neither question. Of course they're not. Is on the list. So uh, neither neither answer. So what uh, are the answers? So search terms include: Do sumo wrestlers have to so. be fat? By the way, for our number one answer. Um, ah. Do sumo wrestlers uh, take steroids? Um, oddly, do sumo wrestlers have testicles? A uh, popular search term. I uh, the what? world wants to know. I do not want to know what okay. that algorithm says. <laughs> I do not. All right. So for round four, we're going to you first, Chris, for All a right. main guess and a bonus on my coworkers are spying on me and stealing my lunch. I actually really like spying on me as a, uh, <laughs> as a valid search term. Unfortunately, other Google users apparently do not because, uh, because oh, they, they haven't not, worked in cubicles uh, long enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and again, these are, these are things people are searching for because they have some curiosity and, and maybe not, uh, not necessarily just asserting, you know. Yeah. All right. But, oh, uh, okay, sense. John, do you have any uh, guesses for search terms for my coworkers are... Um, my coworkers are driving me crazy. Hmm. Well, it's not really a question, but I'll stick with it. And then the other one, uh, <laughs> just thought of a good one. Uh, um, let's just say lazy. Lazy, absolutely. Top three answer, by the way, close to the board. Did you? Awesome. <laughs> did you want to pretend that yeah. that's how it works, Chris, and attempt to steal here? Is there a? Uh... No, I can't steal my own thing. <laughs> You, I thought you had a good guess that you wanted to articulate. That's all. Um, I did, and I already forgot it. So. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. So, so Mike, <laughs> oddly and and very uninterestingly, the number one answer Stealing was stealing. Actually, was my coworkers are the best. Really. But uh, not not terribly. What a strange thing to search for. I, Maybe yeah, if you're looking I, for like an image to put in the. Are, are you? Yeah, you're looking for like a cookie bouquet or something at that point. It's someone trying to do clip art for a uh, an office presentation. There you go. My coworkers are ghetto, and my coworkers are afraid of me. Both popular search terms as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get somewhere with these scores. Okay. So, John, I'm going to go to you first for a main and a bonus answer on: Do robots have? I mean, it's easy to go with like creative answers, but do you think someone would actually search that? Do robots have emotions? Maybe people are asking about that. That's your main guess. Do you have a bonus guess as well? Batteries. Mm. Emotions, by the way, well uh, up the list. So we'll score oh, nice. points for, for a main answer there. See, yeah, I was going to say feelings. I like that one. Emotions yeah. was on the list, yep. Yep, absolutely. I, um, I, I want to say... Do they have to be fat? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do they have testicles? Um, that does not make sense. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, do they have a soul? Are they anatomically correct? I will go there. Okay. So um, it turns out you actually could, just could have swapped those for maximum points because, uh, yeah, um, a genitalia answer is number one on the list. So uh, yeah, you gotta love the, uh, the surfing public. <clears throat> Uh, and souls also uh, scored well, so uh, so that's going to be a full point round for you there for three points and tie us up. By the way, so we have to go into a showdown, I think. Okay, all right, all right. So, so what I'm going to do will be a lightning round. Lightning. Um, zap. All right, we're going to do three of these quickly, and I want shouted answers. I want the first thing anyone can think of. Okay? This always goes so well. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, internet lag adds to it, but I'll, I'll, I'll compensate for it on my end. All right. So it's only three thousand miles away. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right. So we're doing this buzzer beater. What can you come up with for? Has anyone invented uh, a, a fake heart or a heart? We're Wireless electricity. Oh. A way to slow That's time. That's something that I would like somebody right. to invent. How about a time machine <laughs> is definitely on the board. So we'll give a, a, ah. a, a, a point there for Chris, but there's still plenty of opportunity to steal this game away. Is it strange ah. to... Not feel sleepy? Be attracted to your cousin? <laughs> Always be hungry? Always be tripping? Yeah, In I'm particular, not... I'm not feeling very entertaining. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's strange to go back to school. All right, all right, we're moving on. It's a lightning round. We gotta go. Is it strange to like anime as an adult? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're still at the lightning round here for for rapid fire answers. It's more of a light like drizzle than lightning, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Why do I have so much hair? Games. Body odor. How about uh, mucus? Mucus way up on the list. There we oh. go. We're done. All right, all right. Here, guys, the tie continues because everyone has a lightning round answer. So, can I make myself cry? I make Pretty. Myself... Thinner. Really? Uh, dinner. Can I make myself wake up earlier? Be motivated. Can I make myself guess better answers. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna abandon this one. Unsearchable on Facebook. Uh, a popular answer. Not as popular as can I make myself lactate though. All right, so ooh, we're keeping it classy, okay. by the way, for the final. The uh, question, can a fart be lit on fire? Way up on the ooh. list. Uh, ah. Slightly below kill you, by the way, but can I fart <laughs> uh, catch fire? One of the top <laughs> answers. So Chris is able to steal this game in our oh. exceedingly speedy lightning round. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It'll look a lot faster, I think, when it actually airs. Congratulations. I don't know if I call that a win. <laughs> Look at the question I won with. Can, I think I'm really farts... bad at searching for things online. I, oh, I, I feel the need to, to to put in that, that far side cartoon when the dragons light their sneezes, <laughs> you know, because they're, they're all sitting around lighting their sneezes. Yeah, it's it's well, Dan, believe it or not, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. That was. I enjoyed that a lot. That was definitely great. Yeah. But so, John, thanks for being on the show. Where can Thanks people find you? Um, uh, JohnGetsGames.com is a really easy way. Um, uh, there's a bunch of stuff on there. Just search on YouTube for John Gets Games. Um, yeah, since I mostly just do um, videos, the YouTube is the, the main way that you can find that. So yeah, there's, I guess just John Gets Games. Just do a Google search for John Gets Games and then uh, I have no idea what the autocomplete correction is gonna be after that. <laughs> I, I don't think I wanna learn. I kinda think like we need to play a game now and maybe <laughs> there's an idea there. There's a kernel of a game, I think. So this was a lot of fun. It was great getting to know you, meet you and talk with you on air. Um, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to, to do this with us. So thanks for coming yeah. on. Yeah, well, again, thanks for inviting me. This is a, it's a really good time. Awesome. So thank you for being on. Thank you, Dan, for that game. And thank you at home for watching. So next time you need to play through when you're going to game all night, check out John Getz Games. Have a good night. <laughs> game All Night is proud to be sponsored by Game Toppers. Check them out at GameToppersLLC.com. Upgrading your gaming experience. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our efforts at comedy and fun, please support us on Pod Pledge. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, don't forget to engage with us on Board Game Geek Guild 3134. You can also check us out on our website, GameAllNightShow.com. This show has been made possible through supporters like these. Angry Octopus. awesome a lot when we when we take a break i say like awesome that was awesome sweet i know i talk fast and i know i talk a lot so this one's near and dear to my heart big sumo fan <laughs> do they eat small babies um <clears throat> i've never had to edit a game so much